Hello everyone, welcome to Transmit Yourself, where I help people with fear of commitment to create fulfilling relationships. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what to do when you don't really miss your partner. Missing people with whom we have a special attachment is a totally normal behavior. We have a special bond with someone, we have some connection, right? And we're not with them for some time, then we can feel this little longing to be with them. So let's say someone with a secure attachment, they can feel this and they can see it again as something typical, something even maybe as a sign of care for that person and wouldn't let that really interfere with, with their lives. Now, someone with uh, an anxious attachment, they can really let that interfere with their lives because then they, they can get a bit nervous, anxious, or sad or needy, and then they can become a little bit demanding at those times or simply get jittery or nervous, right? So these are uh, those two cases, the secure attachment and the anxious attachment. Now, what happens with someone with an avoidant attachment, which is typically the attachment style most typical for a commitment phobe? In their case, they can have a very hard time missing their partner. And this, again, is totally normal. This can be very easily interpreted by themselves or by their partner as they not actually loving the partner which of course can create many difficulties in the relationship. I recall in one of my previous relationships, which lasted around four months. At the beginning, I was very excited with this partner, but then as the power scale, let's say, balanced out and then I was feeling more in control of my emotions than her, then I stopped feeling this excitement. And, but I would feel normal, I would feel okay, let's say, when with her. However, I, I do recall when I would spend some time without her that I started getting worried because when I felt within myself, I didn't really feel as if I was missing her. And instead, I, I felt even some type of relief and even some emptiness when thinking about her. And that was really worrying me. So what happened is that after some months of being together, about three months maybe, she moved out to another city. and. Uh, we were seeing each other about once a week, whereas before it was like three, four times a week. And I recall that during the week, I wouldn't really miss her. And that started bothering me. After a couple of weeks like that, I was starting to think maybe this is in love. If it's very strange, when I'm with her, I'm okay, but without her, I just don't miss her. And of course, as I wasn't missing her, I didn't really feel the need or the urge to write to her too much or to call her. And this was creating some problems on the other side. So my ex-girlfriend at that point, she was starting to doubt whether I was actually authentically in love with her and was starting to complain. So what happened is, as I didn't write enough or call enough, I started feeling this guilt that her expectations were not being met and of course, I, I couldn't really because I just wasn't missing her. On the other hand, after a couple of weeks in this state, I remember how when we actually did meet, I felt a little bit grumpy or irritated and I just didn't know what was happening with me. So what happened is that after a couple of weeks in this state, the little voice inside my head started saying, this isn't love, this isn't the relationship for you or the person for you. Otherwise, you would be head over heels in love with this person. You would be really missing her when you're not with her and you wouldn't be able to stop thinking about her. And on the other hand, you're just not missing her. So something is off here. So what happened is that when we met one last time as a, as a couple, I told her that I thought that I, I lost my love, that I actually wasn't in love with her anymore and that we should break up. Then I went out with friends and I didn't talk about this with anyone because it was very strange. The relationship was perfect, but I just stopped feeling many of those things. And I didn't want to share any of, of that with anyone because uh, I felt I was going to be judged. 
So this is just one example of my experience with this. Today I have really worked on this issue and I can feel a greater and deeper connection with my, with my partner, with my spouse. And of course I do feel that longing when we're, when we're apart, but it doesn't mean that I have to go head over heels at that point and get obsessed or something thinking about her. I just feel like it would be nice to be with her and feel some feel the connection, but of course I get back to what I'm doing or I give her a call, whatever it is, but I understand a lot more what was happening with me and I don't push myself also to feel something that I might not be feeling at that point. It's simply what it is at that, at that uh, moment in time. So what can you do if you are having this issue of not missing your partner? My first advice is don't panic because it is totally normal. If you do have an avoidant attachment style and you do have some fear of commitment, it's the underlying cause is having some difficulties creating an authentic bond or a deep bond with other people. So no wonder that you're gonna have, let's say difficulties missing someone when you're far apart from each other. So don't judge yourself as wrong at that moment because that's just gonna make you feel guilty or as an imposter in that relationship. Neither judge the relationship or your partner as the wrong one. Remember that you don't need to miss someone in order to love them. That's something that you probably learned somewhere, but it doesn't apply to you at this moment. You have some difficulties creating a connection and that's totally fine. So if you at some point felt some connection with this person, some authentic connection and you felt maybe some feelings of love or there were many things that you liked about each other at some point, that's probably and most likely still in there with you. Those feelings of love are probably hidden behind layers and layers of blockages and fears and limiting beliefs that can be worked out. So don't judge directly that because you cannot or you don't really miss your partner that that's it, that it's not love because that's just gonna make you rush into hasty decisions that are not really representative of what's really going on. You will only be able to see the truth, the truth as in what you really feel for this person when you are more at peace and, what, and when you're clearer about what's going on with you. So have patience with yourself, work on your blockages, recognize them, and then layer after layer you will see how as these things fall apart you will start feeling more of a connection with your partner. My second tip is to observe yourself when you are with your partner in comparison to when you are without your partner. Typically, what happens with many people with commitment phobia is that when they are with their partners, they can feel a little bit of a tension, some type of anxiety, maybe some underlying fear of being controlled or of having expectations to meet from their partner. And then when they are away from each other, maybe when the partner leaves for a couple of days, they can even feel some type of relief and even peace. So allow yourself to observe, see yourself as an experiment, right? And just be curious about how you feel with and without your partner and start noting which thoughts can be uh, the underlying cause. And remember that if you are with your partner and you have all these feelings that I'm talking about, this creates stress. This is, let's say, a almost like a constant but low fight or flight mode. And of course, if you are not with your partner and you don't feel that anymore, you feel a bit of relief, no wonder that you are not going to miss her or not miss her too much. Because of course, if you're with her, you're pretty much subconsciously associating your partner with that anxiety, with that stress and with that fight or flight mode. And your system wants to be at peace. So it is at peace when it doesn't have the trigger or the what it considers to be the potent the cause of that anxiety which is when you're alone so this is pretty much the main reason 
why you might not be missing your partner. And this is all totally within the sphere and within the realm of fear of commitment and avoid an attachment style. And my third and last tip is to understand and resolve the main reasons why you're not missing your partner. This include the, the normal, typical reasons for commitment phobia, which you can find in many of my videos, but they include especially a fear of expectations, a fear of missing out, a fear of rejection, and a fear of being controlled or of losing their freedom. So I invite you to explore these things, to ask yourself how true these things really are, or you can find help. You can ask me, you can write me an email if you want help with this. And what, what I can assure you is that as you work on these things individually, either by yourself or with the help of someone, what will happen is that the effect of these things that are very subconscious will be reduced in time. And then you will, you will see yourself connecting a lot more easily and naturally with people in general and of course with your partner. Then of course when you're apart, you will probably feel some longing, you will uh, maybe, uh, you could even say that you're missing her, but not necessarily that you will be at that point getting obsessed about her or things like that. That's also not necessary or even healthy. So you don't want it to be something that interferes with your life. If it comes, it comes and it's it, if it comes, it will do so naturally as you work on yourself. In the meantime and in the process, as you're working on yourself, my main recommendation, which was point number one, is just to take it easy, not to judge yourself, to see it as what you are and who you are at that point, and just to let things evolve in time as you understand yourself better. Now, again, if you need help with this, I invite you to write me an email. I, I write here my email address underneath, so you can simply just drop me an email and let me know what your situation is with your fear of commitment or with issues missing your partner or with anything related to this. And then we can discuss a little bit further how I could be of help to you as a coach. All right, this has been today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in your comments what your experience is with this topic. Don't forget to share, to subscribe, and to like this video, and see you very soon. Thank you.